Today, I'm gonna to show you how to plan the perfect trip abroad. I've been to 60 countries and this is what I've learned along the way. I'm actually gonna be planning a trip of my own as we do this video. I'm off to Kyrgyzstan next week and we're gonna do all the planning together. I'm gonna to show you the exact steps, starting with number one, which is setting the budget. I like to set the budget before planning anything else. I feel like it helps avoid disappointment. I feel like it would be absolutely soul crushing if you planned this epic trip to say Australia only to figure out that you can't actually afford it and then have to go back to zero. I know sometimes the destination will have to come first. You will have those bucket list trips. You will have perhaps your honeymoon and have a very specific vision of what that should look like. And then you will just make the budget fit or you will go slightly overboard. But generally speaking, this is my advice. Now for the trip that I I'm currently going on my budget is about a thousand pounds or twelve hundred dollars and that is including flights and the second thing you need to figure out right off the bat is the time frame when do you want to go are you going to be able to take time off work is it during any big major holidays like Christmas or is it going to be around summertime when all the kids are off school are your friends or whoever's coming with you going to be allowed to take time off take into account your general time frame and then try and find a bit of flexibility because it's really going to help you with booking your flights. For me, for this particular trip, the time frame was end of March to mid-April. I have a very specific amount of time, which is a bit annoying because flexibility is really helpful when planning, but I, I just have things on either end. Number three is where the fun begins. We're beginning to pick our destination, and I have a few different approaches that I like to take before I settle on the final answer, which I have already given away for this video. It is Kyrgyzstan. So number one, I start with this random note that I have on my phone. My notes are just an absolute brain dump. Everything that's inside my head goes in here. Otherwise, I think this would explode. And there's a note in here called 30 before 30 because I am 29 and just let's, whatever, let's not. I have a lot of ideas for things that I wanna do. You can call it basically a bucket list. And so one of the first things I'll do when planning a trip is go through this note and figure out if there is any bucket list adventure that aligns with the time of year and the time frame that I have and the budget. And for this trip, that was the bit that caught my eye. Because flight prices tend to be the biggest expense they're the next thing I look at. I will do a deep dive into my favorite flight search platform and figure out what is going, like what's cheap, what's weirdly affordable. Once I've completed my flight search, I like to review the results with different travel styles in mind. And what I mean by that are different opposites. Like, do I want a beach holiday or a mountain holiday? Do I want a really warm holiday? Or do I want somewhere that's a bit colder, maybe a bit of a break from the summer months? What else? Do I want an adventure or do I want something a bit more relaxing? The answer is always adventure but it, it's worth asking the question. The next thing I like to do is check travel advisories if there are some destinations that I'm not sure of from a safety perspective. So if you're planning a trip to Europe, you're probably fine. You don't really need to do this step. But if you're planning a trip to a country with a recent history of conflict, then do check those advisories just to make sure that nothing is currently kicking off so that you don't get in the middle of it. Typically, there are pockets of violence in different countries. For example, I was in Mexico at the beginning of this year, had an absolutely incredible trip, but there were a few states where there is violence currently erupting, so we were discouraged from visiting. Don't let this bit of the research scare you. You'll be absolutely fine. Just do it before you get there to avoid any unpleasant surprises. And finally, when choosing your destination, now is the time to review your budget again and make sure that wherever you're planning to go aligns with it because some destinations are just incredibly expensive. I'm gonna quickly show you a website I love using for this. This is where you can figure out how much on average you're gonna spend per day in the destination that you're thinking of visiting. So look at a few places, compare and contrast, and figure out which one suits your budget best. And one bit of Googling that's worth doing as well is checking the exchange rates. Sometimes they can be really favorable, meaning that it's the perfect time to visit a specific destination. Even if that destination is quite quite an expensive one it might be worth visiting now that the the odds are in your favor all right and now it's time to start booking your flights this is a very exciting part of the process for some for me personally it's a little bit stressful because there are a lot of elements at play i'm gonna do a whole separate video about finding the cheapest flights so if you have any questions about the booking process please leave them in a comment below and i will do my best to answer them 
Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention. Sadly, this is not a sponsored video, but there is a brand that I have worked with in the past and they are amazing. It's called Jack's Flight Club. Jack's Flight Club is a newsletter that sends you the best flight deals. I use the premium version, which includes about seven to 10 flight roundups every week, but they also have a free one if you wanna check it out. Once you've got your flights, it's time to book accommodation. And I haven't actually booked my accommodation for the Kyrgyzstan trip. So we're literally gonna be doing it together right now. There are a few websites I like to review when looking for accommodation the first being Airbnb. Okay. Airbnbs are incredibly convenient for us as travelers, but sometimes they are very detrimental to the people that actually live in the place, okay? Because they drive rents up in the city center, they make certain parts of towns almost uninhabitable and unaffordable for the people that call them home. Sometimes I do book Airbnbs, being totally honest, but there are places where you should really think twice before doing that because it is just such a big touchy issue for, for the people that live there. And the main thing when we're visiting these countries is wanting to learn about the local culture and hopefully at the very least not destroy it. Next, we're going to look at booking.com. That is the website I personally like to use, but there are tons of similar platforms out there. Here you can see me searching for a place in Kyrgyzstan. I really wanted something local and authentic, so I was particularly interested in guest houses around the city center. I ended up staying at Silk Road Guest House, which you can see in my Kyrgyzstan vlog over here, and it was really, really brilliant. I was very happy with it. Now, one thing I talk about a lot on this channel is free or budget travel, and I do want to offer a few accommodation options that literally will cost you nothing just because it's worth knowing about them and my two recommendations for a trip like this would be number one couch surfing where you can literally meet people who will host you for free and number two trusted house sitters which is literally what I'm doing right now trusted house sitters is a platform that connects you with house owners who are looking for someone to take care of their pets while they're away I have done a ton of this around the UK you can watch my video about house sitting over here but in some countries it's just not popular enough yet so unfortunately I couldn't find anything in Kyrgyzstan but I am going to Argentina very very soon and I've already got a three-week house with secured which I'm super excited about. And the final thing you should consider when booking your accommodation is location. Obviously, this is hugely important. Figure out how central you want to be and don't be deceived because in some cities, being central is not the best thing you can do. I'm talking from experience as a Londoner, as an ex-Londoner. In London, I wouldn't necessarily recommend staying in the center because it's hugely expensive. It's very, very touristy. And I think there are neighborhoods that are far more interesting than Westminster, Knightsbridge, wherever you kind of end up with that approach. So in smaller places, I would probably say stay central, especially if you're short on time. In larger cities, you're gonna need to do a bit more digging. And my final, final word of caution when booking accommodation is to always read the reviews. Reviews might tell you things that pictures won't reveal, like is the flat incredibly noisy in the middle of the night, which is something I've definitely experienced, or my personal favorite, and this has happened to me twice, okay? Does the flat not have any windows? Twice now I have stayed in literal, well, not literal, but semi-literal bunkers. Step number six is planning your transport. How will you get from the airport or the train terminal to the city or your, your actual accommodation. This is particularly important if you may not have Wi-Fi when you land or if you're arriving in the middle of the night. One final note on planning transport. This might also be the stage at which you look up booking cars if you're, if you're planning to rent or just figuring out the train system, the bus system or how the public transport works. Step number seven is what I would call the boring this is the part where you're going to check that all your documents are valid and you can actually travel with them. And frankly, this might be a little too late to be checking them. So maybe do this before you do anything else, actually. So number one, I've written down, get visas and insurance. Make sure that you are allowed legally to visit this country. Make sure you have travel insurance. Some people like to, I'm going to close the laptop. This is important. Some people like to skip booking travel insurance. It's the kind of thing I probably did like 10 years ago. Would never do again. Don't. Mm, okay, just get your insurance. Lecture over. Next up, I've written down, when does your passport expire? Make sure that you have at least six months of validity, 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 whatever that word, validity on your passport before you travel because some places will not let you in. A few more boring questions. Will you need an international driver's license? Do you need yellow fever vaccinations or any other vaccinations? 
COVID stuff seems to pretty much have died down, but some places do require specific jabs. Two final things on the boring bit. Number one, make sure that you have malaria pills if you need them. Sometimes they can be a little hard to find in pharmacies on site. And finally, print out copies of all the important documents you're traveling with. Don't rely on a phone, don't rely on your laptop, rely on yourself. <laughs> Random weird empowerment for you. Okay, next money so the first thing you're gonna do is get a travel debit card because why don't you have one yet there are so many on the market and they are free the one that i really like to use is monzo and my second favorite is revolut however depending on where you live you'll have access to different ones they're gonna save you a lot of money on exchange fees now if you are stubborn and you are choosing not to listen to me then at the very least please call your bank to let them know that you're gonna be out of town that you're gonna be abroad because sometimes they have a tendency to absolutely sabotage you. They might just block your card and you'll be stuck without any access to cash, which is very dangerous. Next tip on the money front, download this app. It's so incredibly useful. Now there might be other apps like XE. It doesn't really matter which one you get, but get a currency exchange app to make sure that you're always playing a reasonable price because I have definitely put myself in situations where I didn't fully understand the exchange rate and I overpaid for things. And finally, have a bit of cash because you might need it pretty much as soon as you land, for example, to pay for a taxi or some kind of public transport. So there are a few different routes here to getting that cash. Number one, you could exchange it back home. And if you are doing that, fair play, it's gonna make you feel more secure probably having that on you already, but don't exchange a huge quantity because it's usually not a good exchange rate that you're gonna get. Or number two, you could take money in your own currency and exchange that at the airport. I would absolutely caution against this. The exchange rates at airport kiosks are not good. And number three, this is what I normally do. I just bring a card and I take some money out at the airport. I just withdraw cash. And I use my travel cards as mentioned previously. So I am not getting bad exchange rates and I'm not paying any extra fees. Okay, that's the money done. Now let's do some fun research. This is probably my favorite part and it's probably gonna be your favorite part as well because this is just so entertaining. And sometimes being totally honest, I find this process of planning before I go just as fun as the trip itself. Having a tiny bit of knowledge before you land, I think is very exciting. I studied political science at university, so I'm always really interested in learning about the different systems, the political culture in different countries, but perhaps that's not your realm of interest. Perhaps you're interested in music or film, cinema. So, so look up things that interest you and then tie them into this new culture that you're gonna be exploring that makes it a much more educational, a much more vibrant experience. Educational probably isn't the, the most exciting word to have used there, but if you're a bit nerdy like me, then you're gonna relate to what I'm saying, I think. Number 10 is one of my favorite parts of prepping for a trip, but it may not be for you and you are welcome to skip it. But again, I think it makes your trip so much more exciting. And that is learning a few phrases in the local language. In Kyrgyzstan specifically, they speak Russian, which is pretty lucky for me because so do I. I'm not perfect by any means, but I did live in Russia for one year. I studied a bit of Russian at university. Я думаю, что очень полезно выучить несколько фраз, немного на языке страны, где будешь путешествовать. I've never spoken Russian online before. The phrases can be very, very basic. Just learn how to say thank you, please, excuse me, that kind of stuff. One beer, please, if you're drinking. Whatever you're gonna need for your trip. The next thing I like to do is take advantage of a really handy free feature on Google Maps, and that is downloading your maps offline so you always have access to them as long as you have your phone on you. All you have to do is go into the app, click on your profile, and then download the section that you need. Sometimes you might wanna download the entire country. It's gonna take up a bit of memory. Sometimes you just have specific cities that you want to save. Now, speaking of phones, you might want to figure out whether you're going to need internet access and if so, how you're going to get it. So there are a few different options. Number one is getting a local SIM card, which you can buy at any shop in, in the city or in the country that you're visiting. The second option is getting a virtual SIM card, which is something that's new to me. I've never tried it personally, but it seems very promising. So here are some websites that offer that service. Basically just make sure if you wanna be connected that you have the ability to do so. And if you do wanna use a foreign SIM card, I think some phones need to be unlocked. So make sure it's 
unlocked. And now we can finally start putting it all together, which is a very rewarding part of the process. Personally, I don't do anything fancy when it comes to itineraries. I just write one out on my phone. Like I said earlier, this app contains my brain and this is where I'm gonna input all the different activities that I plan to do in Kyrgyzstan. Once you have compiled your itinerary, consider sharing it with someone like a close friend, your partner, maybe your parents, to make sure that someone always knows where you are or where you should be should anything bad happen. The final step in this travel planning process, of course, is packing. I am going to do a whole full separate video on this because it is a huge topic and something that I still struggle with sometimes, but I am getting a lot better and a lot less stressed about it. And that is how you plan a trip. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any packing questions, please let me know because that's going to be one of the next videos that I'm working on. Otherwise, like, subscribe and see you next week. Bye.